Hello, this is Professor Dan Kernler of Elgin Community College. This video is another one in my statistics series. This video, we're going to talk about some bad graphs. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to talk about some bad or misleading graphs here and try to hit on three of the kind of primary ways that people make a misleading graph. And so you can avoid that type of graph in the future. The first is cherry picking your data. So choosing specific times or specific instances that show something that exaggerates something. So here's a report uh, that Governor Cuomo from New York used in one of his um, kind of daily COVID reports, and it shows this huge decline in the positivity rate. But what Nathan McDermott noted on Twitter is that what he actually did is he picked the highest daily positivity rate and then the lowest daily positivity rate to give a false impression that there was a huge drop. So here's a more accurate one. You can see there's a peak of 7.1%. And then the bottom one was 4.9%, but really the average, it is declining, but not as significantly as the graphic showed. So we wanna show all of the data points that we have in between those. It's really misleading to just show those two. Here's another one. This is about global warming. Uh, there are two issues with this one. Number one is there's a wide variety of models that are used in different data sources. And this is just a single one here that's used in a lot of the, um, presentations where people try to show that there is no global warming, so they use one specific model. Also, it stops. It stops a little bit after 1900, which is when all the industrialization started to really have an effect and global warming really started to kick off. So the next one, this is a more accurate representation of a variety of models. Also, you'll notice on the far right here, that spike is there because it includes all the way up to the year 2000. A second common um, way to make a misleading graph is to manipulate the y-axis. So here we have one that was used in a report to Congress many years ago um, about why we should defund Planned Parenthood. And this one in particular uses two different y-axes, one for abortions and one for cancer screening. If we put them on the same scale, we can see that abortions are relatively flat. And yes, cancer screenings have gone down, but if we include all the different funding mechanisms, all the different things that they've been funding, we can see that some other ones are up, while that one certainly is down. Um, and it's a more well-rounded uh, representation. This next one is a particularly bad graph. This is about Obamacare enrollment near the beginning of the Obama administration, and they had a target goal of 7 million, and we're only at 6 million, and look, it's basically at zero, but obviously the Y scale is different. They did, um, in their defense, print a correction and use that later on for the rest of their uh, presentations, and it's still below, but now it's more authentic because the, the Y scale should start at zero. Here's another one from the Obama administration itself, actually. Uh, and in this one, we're looking at high school graduation rates, and it looks like it's going up, up. I mean, it is going up, up, up. And it was at its highest in 2011, 2012. The jumps are pretty significant, but if we zoom in on that scale over there, we can see it started at 70%. So the jumps are, they're still, it's still going up, but they're, relative, they're relatively small compared to the overall graduation rate itself. Here's one from Bloomberg Crypto trying to show that Bitcoin is crashing. Again, if we zoom in on the Y scale, we can see, yes, it's declined. It's declined 10% or so, but it hasn't crashed to zero because the Y scale starting at 5,000. All right, this graph, this graph is just bad. They're, a, <laughs> they're trying to show that Maybe murders are declining after the Stand Your Ground Act was passed in Florida, but the Y scale is inverted, right? It's zero to a thousand. So if we flip it and make it correct, now we can see that actually murders were up after passing that Stand Your Ground law. Here's one from the 2020 campaign. This is from Andrew Yang, trying to show that he has the most donations from diverse neighborhoods, but his scale is a little wonky here. He's 2% ahead of Bernie Sanders, but then Bernie Sanders is 4% ahead of Elizabeth Warren. So kind of a funky Y-axis on that one, Mr. Yang, for a guy who's supposed to be pretty mathy. 
Right, the last type is using shapes incorrectly. And this is often when you use a shape, when you make it taller and it stretches wider as well, you might make it twice as tall, but because you're looking at area, uh, it looks four times as big. So I've got a few examples of, of these. So this first one I have is a classic one. This one is about the average heights of women by country. And you can see that of, of the ones they have here, the smallest ones are from India and the tallest are from Latvia. <laughs> but if you were to look at the shapes of these women, there'd be pygmy women in India and giants living in Latvia. The two issues here, number one, the scale isn't starting at zero, so that's problematic. But then second, the shape, by stretching the height, it stretches the width as well, and it makes the Latvian woman look ridiculously large. Here's another one. This is from an early article in Vox. They were talking about where donations are going toward um, different causes different different health related causes and they're using these circles so if we zoom in here this is about deaths in the u.s and they were comparing fundraising for where the deaths are so here we have this circle if we divide the counts here it's about 4.2 and what they did is they made the circle about 4.2 times taller a, a diameter 4.2 times the diameter but then you end up fitting like 14 of those circles in there, so it looks way bigger than four times. So you can't really use a circle. Um, this is another one in their defense. They did print a retraction uh, and update it and have a correct one where even using the circles, now it looks like there's about 4.2 circles in there. So they did update it, but still it's just deceptive that the way that it's written, it's still hard to read those circles like that. All right, here's an infographic with a lot going on, but again, circles. I'm gonna zoom in on the Starbucks here, number of stores by country, and we can see here, we look at these scales, there's a huge scale, one to 24, 25 to 99. Um, you might be better off just making the circle proportional to the number. Last one here, this is about military spending. Uh, if we zoom in on here, again, we have these heights and they're stretching the height of the, the individual, but then it's looking way bigger, like Israel looks two or two and a half times as much as the US. It's certainly more, but it's not that much more. Okay, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching this. If you're interested in more of these, you can subscribe, click the bell to get notified. There's a whole series of these coming out. And I do wanna give a special thank you to the Elgin Community College Board of Trustees who helped support me for this project as part of my sabbatical during the spring 2021 semester. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.